I run an unconference in uh, Greenville, South Carolina called RestFest, and everybody gets five minutes to talk, so I'm okay with trying to cram it in. Um, we'll see how this goes. I'm talking about annotation and community, which includes uh, standards and open source projects. Um, when I'm not up here, I'm working on getting the W.W. W. Norton people to have an open source policy. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm Benjamin Young. I also go by Big Blue Hat, all the other places, uh, especially digital ones and maybe my voicemail if you ever call my phone. Um, I work for John Wiley & Sons. We're a 210-year-old publisher. Uh, yeah, exactly. We have an open source policy. No more excuses, y'all. I'm a co-editor of the web annotation data model and vocabulary that happened at the W3C a couple years ago. It's been mentioned a few times. Um, I'm going to co-chair the Jason LD working group that's going to start in about a month. If y'all are into Jason at all, please talk to me about that. Um, and currently entirely too busy at the web publishing working group at the W3C. There's a pattern here, if you notice. And I'm um, also trying to get Apache Annotator on its feet. Um, for those, I'll pitch another hackathon. If you aren't worn out of hacking on Friday and want to hang around a little bit longer, there's a much smaller group of us meeting to just code on Apache Annotator. Just find me in a hallway. Um, so I'm going to run through a survey of stuff. Um, that's gone on in standards and open source. These are all places where I hope any of you will see yourself as a potential participant. Maybe you've already been involved. There are some faces I recognize from different places. Um, if not, hopefully there's something here that you can, you can find useful. Um, first, we'll go through the standards. That's not abysmally small up there, but it is a big list. Um, a lot of this work started in what's called the Open Annotation Community Group, which predates the W3C's working group. Um, you can find some of the historic data at openannotation.org. The first thing that came out of that was a specification called the Open Annotation Data Model. It then found its way into EPUB and lots of other things. Eventually, there was a web annotation working group that picked up that community group's work and turned it into what's called a technical recommendation from the World Wide Web Consortium or the W3C. That's like an official web spec. So it turned into three specs, the web annotation data model, then we also did a vocabulary, which is like below the data model that's useful in other types of data formats. Um, and then the web annotation protocol, which you've seen actually on a couple slides already, for use in uh, moving these annotations around. There were a couple notes, which are less committal um, versions of spec text that say these are other ways you can do stuff um, with these data model and formats. And then there was a digital publishing interest group that took this web annotation work and tried to apply it to digital publishing in the space of uh, use cases and how would this work um, should we ever write specs around it. An interest group is, um, again, less committal but tries to get um, powerful players in the industry, like in publishing, to get together and talk about their common needs so that they can eventually birth a working group. That working group has shown up in the last year. It's called the Web Publishing Working Group, where we're working to um, continue the work on web annotations to focus it on web publications, which is potentially a future um, HTML plus JSON-LD sort of idiosyncratic way of getting a publication type space into the web, which mostly just operates in pages and not really conceptual publications currently. That's a, a fun ongoing process if you're a W3C member and a publisher or an author or somebody who writes a reading system or something, this is a group you really should be involved in, especially if you've already paid your member dues and want to come join. It's like one click. If not, you should join the W3C. There's a great opportunity to get involved. Um, we will eventually be working on EPUB 4 and uh, possibly a thing called pack packaged web publications, although that one's a, a much lower priority currently. Deep breath. All right, so here's some more. Um, these guys relate mostly to open annotation. The IIIF um, does image annotation stuff primarily, and uh, some galleries and archivists use this uh, extensively, like the Getty Foundation. EPUB 3 has an open annotation version for that. Some people have used that successfully in their EPUB formats. I don't know how wide the support is among reading systems. Um, Microsoft's annotations for ARIA just started up. I think Evan might be uh, monitoring that at the very least. And now we'll move on to source code. Um, the source code history runs pretty parallel to the 
uh, standard stuff we just went through. So annotator JS showed up right around the time that the Open to Annotation Community Group happened. I uh, don't remember which got there first, but they, in my mind, were around the same time because I showed up a little later. Um, annotator JS then more or less morphed into what we now call Hypothesis. A lot of those developers worked for Hypothesis for at least a period of time. Um, the code changed and became Hypothesis. At some point, Randall Leeds, while at Hypothesis, refactored some of these libraries out into what is officially called Randall Leeds Libraries. Um, somebody else mentioned these at lunch, and I said, which libraries are you talking about? And they said, well, Randall Leeds Libraries. I was like, yeah, okay, that is what they're called. Um, you can find them as dom-anchor-something, dash text quote, dash text range, dash whatever. There's like five or six of them. Those things are going to turn into, um, I'm going to jump over to the next point, turn into the Apache Annotator project, which already has some wrapping code to make using multiples of these together easy. So you can come from the JSON format, which is used for the web annotation data model, and turn them into actual anchors in the DOM, and then choose what you do with them. Either extract data from those, those anchored points, or highlight them, or whatever. But it's Apache Annotator is working to do a minimal library kit to make that easy for people doing JavaScript development in a browser. So a lot of the kind of demos you saw from Norton earlier. Uh, the Web Annotation Working Group also generated a thing called the Selectors and States Note, which was a way to encode the selector system that defines a text quote selector or a text range selector and put that in a URL. And there was some code generated as part of that note. Apache Annotators picked up that code and is working to integrate that so you can turn those into URLs as well. So we're trying to find all the entry points and just make it easier for developers to move these things around. Then there's software and services. This is just, again, a survey of everything that's going on right now, all pivoting out of this same sort of community where a lot of these same companies are involved. Um, Hypothesis has a public service that a lot of you have already used, I hope. Um, they also have partner installations and are looking towards federation and things to make uh, communication across those happen well. Um, there was mention in some earlier slides about web annotation protocol. That's the, the standard that helps do that. Um, so it's great to see that being used. Uh, at Wiley, we have a thing called the Wiley Information Model. It's like an internal data model that we store all our stuff in. We already use the open annotation um, data model and vocabulary for encoding our editorial workflow. Um, part of what I do at Wiley is help make the minimal shift to web annotation. A lot of that is mostly gummed up in the gears of uh, software production, not in the, in the complexities of data modeling. Um, but we are committed to that format, and that's in process. Um, these are just a few other ones. WorldBrain IO, um, they use the web annotation data model spec in their uh, sort of personal search engine service that you can add to your browser and collect web pages as you go and then make them all searchable. You can keep highlights in web annotation format. Uh, Gerben, who's here and smiling because he knows I'm going to reference him, is, uh, is building webmimex.org, which has some similar goals for personal archiving and highlighting of web assets. And Dokali, which is apparently how you're supposed to pronounce that, like Oakley Dokali, um, does linked research where you can publish your own journals and uh, science articles, accept web annotations, and distribute them socially through ActivityPub and services like that. Um, very promising work there. There have been lots of others this morning. Please tell me about yours if I don't know about it, and I'll update this slide. Um, but we're still stuck in a lot of ways. We have all this stuff going on, and there's all kinds of interesting activity. I annotate is now in its, what, sixth, seventh year? Um, and we hope it keeps continuing. We want to see more of this kind of stuff as Wiley. Um, also, as an Apache annotator committer, I hope this stuff sticks and more people do annotation for more reasons. But a lot of what is slowing us down are these kind of struggles. Um, we have what's been called the Frightful Five or the Fearsome Five. I don't Fearsome sounds too positive. Um, I think it's the Frightful Five, um, which are like Apple and Google and Facebook and you know these household names that we love and hate and hate to love and love to hate um, that make these great products that then ultimately turn us into products. And we begin to lose the boundaries of self and, and get confused about who we are when our content gets monetized back to us or turns into things we don't want. Um, annotation can help either make these things worse or it can help um, give us opportunities to be ourselves other places. Um, fake news is one other people are way more qualified to talk about here than myself. 
Um, trolling is something that anybody's ever run a, a commentary system anywhere is well familiar with. Um, certainly if you've ever posted a YouTube video, you know how this works. It's a big hole in the bottom of the page where people put the worst possible thing they happen to have lying around. And then also lack of diversity. The, the web continues to suffer despite it being the most democratic thing on the planet um, and an opportunity for any pub anyone to publish anything opens the door to all the things above, bad things being published or taken, and then also that just not enough voices actually get heard. So again, annotation has opportunity to fix some of these. Um, there's some structural solutions underpinning a lot of this uh, community question and where to get involved and whether or not your organization should participate in these things is a concept called Conway's Law. Um, it's rather old, it's 1960s or something in computer science. And it says, organizations which design systems are constrained to produce designs which are copies of the communication structures of these organizations, which basically means your software structure is gonna look a heck of a lot like the organizational structure. So insofar as we see organizations structure themselves in a top-down authoritarian model, their software starts to look awfully like a top-down authoritarian model. When you see organizations that are decentralized or even just have something as simple as a decentralized team, like Hypothesis does in multiple time frames, uh, we have a little bit of this at Wiley, I'd love more of it, um, where you're distributed and have to deal with the fact that you're distributed. You make your decisions often asynchronously over email. You get involved in questions in um, places where you can all contribute, like GitHub or some commonly edited document format. You do things through annotations, like somebody writes the doc, you all comment on it, and then you collectively integrate those things. Working in those models can often change the shape of your software or your standard to look like those models in, in healthy ways, if that's what you're after. If you're wanting something centralized, then maybe you should go the other way. Um, kind of the three big words in this space are centralization and decentralization at the opposite end, but then sitting somewhere in the middle is federation, which works kind of between those two. Um, email as a post office based routing system is essentially federated. The web annotation protocol can be used for federation or decentralization or centralization. Um, so it's not always inherent in the protocol, but more how it gets rolled out in the software service. One of the goals that we have at Wiley is investing in open source and open standards creates a set of shared standards and ideally shared code or shared source since I've got this S thing going in this deck, um, which then leads to shared stability. Because the more of those things we share with other people who have the same objectives, the more likely we are to um, succeed collectively, which publishing could dearly use a collective win sometime. Um, it's that old uh, Wild West thing of if we don't all hang together, we'll all hang separately. But that started with an H, so I didn't use it. Um, so some sample structures. The web annotation working group, which is closed, which actually means we succeeded, uh, which is confusing to people, but we published some specifications. Those are official, you saw them earlier. Um, that one is modeled in a, in a pay to play W3C model where you become a member, and by doing that you also sign some IP agreements that you're gonna invest in these standards in a certain way. So there's, there's reasons they modeled it this way. Um, and then you collectively build those specs as stakeholders in whatever industry you're participating in. Uh, they have a looser space called a community group, the open annotation one that I mentioned earlier that predated the web annotation working group also still exists after that because those don't shut down. Um, and those are places that you can go now, the open annotation community group is. If you're interested in annotation, there are I think a few hundred people who are on that mailing list it's a great place to just show up and say, hi, I'm building stuff with annotation, and here's what it does. Um, or if you're using the web annotation data model, that's a good place to say, I've implemented such and such in this repo, or we'd use it internally, but I can't show you the code because I, I, we haven't gotten our open source policy done yet, um, or whatever. The web publishing working group is another working group model again. Um, it's open to more than publishers, but the object, objective is publishing. So we're working on the needs of publishers, but also readers. Um, how do people want to read on the web in a more immersive way, in a more linear fashion where you're gonna go front to back or the close reading that we've heard about several times. Um, so those are all things that we're working toward. And if you're a W3C member and you're in this room, you really should be part of this working group. If you're not a W3C member, see me after. 
Apache Annotator is, as mentioned, uh, we're going to run a, a smaller hackathon on Saturday. I'm also happy to talk to you at, at the Friday one about anything we're doing there. We're doing these DOM libraries to try and make this tooling easier. Um, Apache is modeled in a in a meritocratic democracy, so you can become a core committer just by showing up and, and contributing in some way, and uh, everybody gets one vote that participates in the project. And ultimately, the software that they build starts to have that same sort of model to it. And then the hypothesis project, you hopefully by now have met at least two hypothesis people. Hypothesites, is that a word? Hypo hypothesis. Oh, that, that works too, hypotheses. So some source solutions, pretty much gone through all of these. Um, there are other working groups and community groups that try to solve some of those other things we saw earlier. The struggles that go beyond just having a standard and having source code to some of the social problems, which as it turns out are harder to solve than the technical ones. Um, there's the Verifiable Credentials Working Group, originally called the Verifiable Claims Working Group. Um, and it, it ties to a lot of what the um, Credibility Coalition is doing and some other similar organizations to try and give people a way to credential whatever they produce. They sign their documents, um, they pass around those claims, even if they're as minimal as saying, I'm over the age of 18 and I want to buy something, um, or 21 in the States. Um, some way to show that without over-revealing, like you do with a, a driver's license. Um, but also with the ability to co-sign things where your employer can sign something on your behalf and thereby get you access to something that you wouldn't individually have access to, but you as part of this organization have access to, which for Wiley, we're in, involved in this working group in part because we have exactly that use case where we have lots of documents that we make available to members of an organization, but you as the person who want to use that document have a really hard time actually getting to it if you're off campus or not at the library um, because it just hasn't been remodeled to suit those uh, scenarios like you working on a train or uh, on your laptop someplace at a coffee shop. So you have to go through this massive auth flow of no, no, really, I am at university, whatever, and I should have permission to this. And, and you have to do that for every publisher. So we're looking at things like verifiable credentials to find ways where you can have a co-signed sort of document that you present to a publisher's website. And then they, they say, yep, it's signed by your university, it's signed by you, and, and you get in and can access the documents you want. The credentials community group sort of adds to that work and goes beyond that to uh, what they call self-sovereign identifiers, where you, you can identify your stuff as you and take claim of it, um, whether it's your data or some identifier for yourself. And that, that opens the door to all kinds of interesting um, applications. Activity Streams and, by extension, Activity Pub is kind of an alternative social networking system that um, right now is mostly taking on Twitter and micro microblogging type sites where you, Mastodon's the popular one, but there's also PeerTube. These are also W3C uh, technical recommendations, and they work at moving content around in a federated or decentralized fashion. Where that's interesting to Wiley as a publisher is it takes web annotation as a possible medium to move around. So you don't have to go through a centralized channel to still have identity of who you are, identity of what you've made, and still publish it to a, wi a wider or ever widening group in a social networking fashion. So that has all kinds of interesting opportunities there. So in summary, the question to ask yourselves after seeing that overly exhaustive list, um, or exhausting, is, is what about your organization? What sort of model do you want to invest in as a publisher or as um, someone who's helping the publishing industry in some way or working in annotation for any reason, science or otherwise? How do you want to model the annotation services and the code and, and standards that you want to use when you go to production or, or when you receive somebody else's services? How do you want it to be modeled ultimately to facilitate what you're after? Um, a lot of what I've heard sort of in the ambient talk is, is about the blockers that are often social or often just antique, because you do work at a multi-hundred-year-old organization, um, around what the organization is, is sort of up to doing and their own confusion about what they might actually get from the commons if they were to participate in it or what they um, feel they can extract, which is usually a bad sign. 
it's a, it's a value exchange that isn't always monetary and isn't always as easily quantified to your procurement department. But understanding the value you get by participating with others and through collaboration can help your ultimate goal of actually not ever having to worry about how you did annotation back in 2018 and that you just do it. And now it's actually part of all the tooling that you have. Because um, we will see some more demos after this. We've seen demos already. Um, at some level, they all look rather similar. And in other ways, they're all really idiosyncratic. So my hope and Wiley's hope is that we continue to high tide raise all the boats, get it farther along so that we have shared infrastructure, shared standards, shared source, and can go on to the actually hard problems of how do we verify that this is me saying these things about this stuff. Um, so some other small takeaways. Planning for the failure should be involved in how you make these determinations. Don't expect it to work. It probably won't. Um, and fail with purpose. Uh, learn from your mistakes. Uh, Apache Annotator is taking a heck of a, heck of a time to get started. Um, and as we go, we're learning a lot about our own organizational str struggles and Apache's need for some improvements. And find friends and make them across boundaries. Um, I have, thanks to the W3C's process, lots of friends and, and collaborators, co opticians some people call them, at other publishers. And we're still developing shared infrastructure together despite us all still gunning for the same market. Um, it, it doesn't, the one doesn't preclude the other. So thank you for the time. That is what I've got. <laughs>